Praise the Lord, Zion. I'm Dwayne Anthony Walker, and I'm standing in front of the altar here at Little Rock Amy Zion Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I have the privilege to serve as pastor. I choose to stand before the altar as a symbol of my humble submission to what I believe is God's will for my life and ministry. I stand here because I am offering myself as a candidate for the office of bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church in the upcoming General Conference in 2016. I love the AME Zion Church. It is the church of my birth. It is the church of my choice. I come from a long tradition of members of the AME Zion Church as members and ministers. As a matter of fact, my grandfather, the late Reverend Roosevelt Leon Walker Sr., served the AME Zion Church for over 50 years as a pastor. My father, the right Reverend George Washington Carver Walker Sr., recently retired as the senior bishop of our great church and served as a pastor and bishop for over 50 years in the Amy Zion Church. I am privileged to serve now for over 25 years as a pastor, having served congregations in Detroit, in Indianapolis, and now here in Charlotte. In Detroit, I served as a pastor of the Metropolitan Amy Zion Church, where God blessed our ministry for six years. I was then moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, where I served as the pastor of the Jones Tabernacle, Amy Zion Church, where there we also experienced great success in that ministry. And now I'm privileged to serve for now over 10 years as the pastor of the Little Rock Amy Zion Church here in Charlotte. Each of these pastoral assignments has taught me so much about the church and what God is calling us to. I strongly believe that God expects the church to be the church, and God has given me a vision for the church that is called excellence in ministry. Excellence in ministry is a model that I believe can be used in any context in our great Zion. And that model of excellence in ministry has five components. God is glorified. Jesus is magnified. People are edified. Faith is fortified so that ministry may be multiplied. As we glorify God, that's a strong emphasis on worship. A strong emphasis on our presentation of ministry. That everything we do in the life of the church should just scream, look at God. The way we keep our facilities should say, look at God. The way we present our ministry should say, look at God. Not look at me, and look at the choir member, and look at the choir director, and look at the usher, but look at God. We should do all we can to bring attention to God. Secondly, Jesus is magnified. Every ministry, every church should see itself as a door by which people come to know Jesus. That everything we do in the church should be done so that people can make a decision for Jesus Christ. Every bulletin that we fold, every song that we sing, every prayer that we pray, every sermon that we preach, every chicken that we fry, all should be done with the express purpose of leading someone to know Jesus as their Lord and their personal Savior. Thirdly, people should be edified. To edify means to equip, it means to empower, and we people should be built up rather than torn down. Fourthly, excellence in ministry is accomplished when faith is fortified. And we're going to have a fortified faith because the opposite of faith is fear. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And I believe that when God is glorified, when Jesus is magnified, when people are edified, when faith is fortified, that ministry will be multiplied and we can reach more souls for the kingdom and bring more people into the awareness and the reality of the power that comes from serving our God. The Amy Zion Church is a wonderful church with a marvelous history, with a marvelous heritage, a heritage of liberation, a heritage of freedom, a heritage of empowerment. And I would like to serve the church at the level of the Episcopacy to help lead our church to do all the things that God is employing and deploying us to do. I ask that you would join me in my desire to serve the church at this level. I look forward to speaking with you as I visit conferences all across our Zion, sharing with them this platform, answering questions, sharing my heart for this church, sharing a desire to serve the church with a spirit of integrity, with a spirit of commitment, a spirit of transparency, so that we can all employ the gifts that God has given us to build a greater church and build a greater world. Would you join me in this desire? I pray that you will help me as we continue to lift up our Zion and lift up our Christ. God bless you.
Thank you for your time. Hello, I'm Elvin Sadler. I'm the general chairperson for Dr. Walker's campaign. We are excited about what is in store over the next couple of years as he prepares to present his platform to the general church. We stand behind him, we believe in him, we know that he has a passion for the church and a commitment to God, and we are just grateful for the opportunity to be on board with him. And we also encourage you to do the same. So look for any paraphernalia or information regarding the Walk of a Bishop 2016 campaign, Elevating Excellence in Ministry. Take care, God bless. Hello, I'm Reverend Melinda Buxton, and I am honored to serve as the local campaign chairperson for the Walker for Bishop campaign. I have served under the leadership of Dr. Walker for eight years now. And I know him to be a man who is true to his word, a man who loves Jesus, a man who wants to glorify God and magnify Jesus, and a man who loves the people of God. Dr. Walker would make an excellent bishop of the AME Zion Church because he has a servant's heart and he would lead this church into the future. Dr. Walker for Bishop 2016. I'm the Director for Marketing and Technology for the Walker for Bishop 2016 and I'm excited to be a member of this committee because I know that Dr. Walker is going to make an amazing bishop. There are a lot of things that are going on in the Zion Church. I love Zion but there's some things that can be worked on and improved and Bishop Dr. Walker will make an amazing bishop to help bring those things to pass. He has already had um, several years of excellent in ministry, and I know that that's all he will bring to the Family Zion Church. Thank you. Hi, I'm Roy Buck, and this is my mother, Mrs. Margaret Farley. We have been members of Gilbert Rock all of our lives, and we want you to know that with Dr. Walker, there's been a blessing because he has done so much with his vision. He's so supportive. And so we want you to know that we support him in everything that he does. We want him to win because we know that he has so much that he can bring with his creativity and his vision to the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. But we also want you to know that it would be a loss. But he has trained us so well that without him, we can continue to go ahead with the vision that he has left. So. We want to thank you for allowing us this opportunity. Mama, did you want to say anything? We love Dr. Walker, and we wish him well. Hopefully, he will make a, uh, a bishop, because he has lots to bring yes, to the connection in the whole family Zion Church. So please give him your support. We love him, and to know him is to love him. Is to love. So please give him your support, and pray for him and us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Deirdre McLynch. I've been here at Little Rock for 28 years. Eight years ago, Dr. Walker came to this church, and wow, did he have a vision for our church. Have we grown? Of course we have. Are we having a high church? Of course we are. Are we focusing on excellence in ministry? Of course we are. Will he make a good bishop? Of course he will. I am so proud of him. I'm proud of him with all the things that he's done here at this church. We have over 50 ministries here, and everybody is all involved. I am so excited for him, and I wish and pray that he will make bishop, because he will take the AME Zion connection to another level. Thank you. We thank God for the privilege of endorsing our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Dwayne A. Walker, as he seeks to uh, run for the office of bishop in the AME Zion Church. Uh, he has been a model minister among us. He has enhanced our work uh, in, the, uh, in our community, in our church and community. He's been present in every struggle and in, in every uh, thing that we hope and seek to do. Uh, I'm sure that in the office of bishop, uh, he will give his best and his total life uh, to this office. And, and I, our church, Zion, will be blessed by it. 
May God bless him, hold him by the might of his right hand as he goes forth from grace to grace and faith to faith. Thank you. Dr. Walker is eminently qualified to be elevated to the office of the Episcopacy. First of all, he's a wonderful Christian, a dedicated man, a person who loves the Lord and who loves the church. Second, Dr. Walker is a scholar, a man of intellect and a man of great understanding. Thirdly, he's a wonderful preacher. He has elevated us as a church for almost eight years, and we are deeply grateful. He is a product of Zion. And now he deserves to be elevated to Zion's highest position. We're thankful and grateful for what Dr. Walker has done for Little Rock Ailey Zion Church. We thank him for all of his efforts. We thank God for his being appointed to this church. We hope and pray that he will do an equally good job with the Amy Zion Church, and I feel he will. Thank you. Good evening. I want to speak on <clears throat> my pastor, Dr. Dwayne Walker, for being a bishop. He's a wonderful, he's a wonderful person. I have seen him down through years. For eight years, he's been here with us. He's a good leader, and I feel like he'll lead the churches on with the ministers, the side and the elder. He'll lead them on up to higher height. I pray God bless him for on Dr. Walker and his family and all his surroundings because he's such a wonderful man and you can look at him and listen to him and tell by his saying and by his speaking and by his living that he has been called by God. He's a man of God. The Bible say, let your light so shine before the world that they'll see your works. And we have seen since Dr. Walker been in the work that he will perform if he get to high height. I pray God blessing upon Dr. Walker each and every day. And I pray God will let me live that I can be there in, in 2016 when he be elected to the bishop. I pray again that he will live the life that's pleasing and accepted in God's sight. He's such a wonderful man. May God continue to have his hand upon him as he walks daily. Hello, it is my pleasure to endorse our pastor, Reverend Dr. Dwayne A. Walker, for the post of bishop in the AME Zion Church. I believe that he is a pastor who cares about his flock, where there is no distinction such as big eyes and little ears. He cares for all of us, and I believe that as a bishop, he will care for all the people over all this world who are Zionites and encourage those who uh, are not Zionites or who are unsaved to come into uh, the Christian vein. He is a lover of people and he is very transparent. Uh, there, are, there are no things that are to be hidden and he wants all of us to share in the kingdom. Uh, he is a lover of lay people as well as clergy. Uh, he wants us to succeed as we strive to bring others to Christ. Uh, I stand here to endorse Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker for Bishop 2016. I've known Dr. Walker for many, many years and it never fazed me how blessed and honored it is to know him. He is a good preacher, he's a good teacher, and if there's anything the Amy Zion Church needs right now, is Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker. I bless, I pray that he will succeed in the things that uh, the church is doing. I look at all the other young pastor preachers that are trying to, but I just feel like Dr. Walker would be a blessing to the Zion Church. Um, he has many talent, many gifts, and with that, I just believe that he's a good man for the bishop, 2016. When Dr. Walker first came to the Little Rock Amy Zion Church, I was so pleased to have him as my pastor. 
I had no knowledge of him before him coming here, but what I have learned of him since he's been at Little Rock and has been my pastor has been absolutely amazing and wonderful. He's such a passionate man of God. He loves God's people and he loves the Lord. And it's not only those who are members here at Little Rock Amy Zion Church. He loves all of God's people and has a heart and a passion for serving to the fullest capacity that he is able. I know that he would make an excellent bishop because he has made an excellent pastor. And he would give no less, yea, even more as a bishop to serve God's people as God would have him to do. I've heard it said that the way you lead as a pastor, if given the chance to become a bishop, you will lead the same way. If that's the case with Dr. Walker, I must say he's a very passionate, loving person. He loves God and he loves God's people. In my experience with Dr. Walker, it feels like that I'm walking in the shadows of a giant. One who believes what he preaches, one who walks the walk and talks the talk. And I know that in 2016, that one of those positions will be filled by him. And I know, just like he has blessed Little Rock and Zion Church, he will take all that he has and bless this denomination. It's an honor for me to stand before you and pay special recognition to Dr. Walker for his bishopship in 2016. I consider it to be a big honor for me to do that. Um, I think Dr. Walker would be a great bishop because of the fact that he leads by example not only for the small children, but even for the elderly. My kids, ages 10 and 16, consider to be a privilege to come to church here at Little Rock. Again, Dr. Walker will make a great vision because, again, he leads by example. I consider it to be an honor to stand before you. I'm Hillary Racino, a lifetime member of the Little Rock Indian Church, and I'm here in support of my pastor, Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker. He is in search of the epistle. Episcopacy, and it is his time. He has his vision of excellence in ministry, and that vision could be expanded so that the whole church could benefit. I pray for him, and I know that if God is with him, he will have success. Bless you, Dr. Walker. Hi, I'm Antoinette Cogan. I am Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker's class leader. When Dr. Walker first arrived about eight years ago, I was told that he was not only going to be a pastor, but a minister. And someone was telling me that I would find out what that meant later on. Well, true to, true to form, Dr. Walker has been a magnificent minister to all of our needs to the church. He has brought with him his vision, his leadership, and so many other things that will make him an excellent choice as he goes to the next level for the Episcopacy. I definitely endorse him. I know that he's going to do a wonderful job because of the things that he has done since he has been at Little Rock. I look forward to seeing Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker in 2016 as the next elected bishop. Thank you. My name is the Reverend A. Alfred Carson. I'm the presiding elder of the New York City District of the New York Annual Conference. I am pleased to be associated and have the Reverend Dr. Dwayne Walker as a friend and brother. And I just want to say that it is time for Zion to have such a man as this to serve as a bishop in our church. He is wonderful. He is one who is God sent and a preacher par excellence. He is great as a pastor don't believe it just look at the ministries of Little Rock AMB Zion Church and all that he's doing in this community and the community of Charlotte and throughout Zion God bless you Dr. Walker and God bless your ministry
Good afternoon. We're here today with Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker, the pastor here at Little Rock Andy Zion Church. So good to see you, sir. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with us. It is my pleasure. Amen. There's such a wonderful buzz all around Zion that's uh, talking, people are talking about you becoming uh, the next bishop in 2016. And so I really just want to um, thank you for coming out and allowing us to speak to you in the, on that subject. I appreciate you uh, having given me this opportunity. Oh, it's my, it's our pleasure. Um, one of the things we wanted to ask you: When did you know you were going to run, and what really led you to want to be bishop? Well, I love the Amy Zion Church. I love the Lord. I love His people. And as I've been pastoring over the last twenty-five years, uh, and particularly pastoring uh, Little Rock Amy Zion Church uh, over the last few years. Uh, it became apparent to me that what God is doing through this ministry and through the ministries that he's allowed me to lead uh, could really be impactful for the whole denomination and just thought it would be good to offer myself for, uh, for that office. Dr. Walker, considering the number of candidates that are running, what actually do you think sets you apart in this field? That's a very good question. Um, you're right. Uh, for this particular election, there are going to be many persons, men and women, very qualified men and women who are going to offer themselves uh, for this office. And uh, what I pause about mostly about running for bishop is that I, I don't have a competitive bone in my body. Um, I, all I can do is offer who I am and what I hope that God would reveal uh, to persons as I seek their support. Um, I've tried to do my very best to pastor every church that I have had the privilege to, to pastor. And I only seek to bring to the office who I am. Um, I don't see myself competing against uh, another candidate. I think that that person should, should present who they are as I present who I am. And hopefully the church will, will find favor and uh, what I reveal to them as my concern and my passion for ministry. Man, I, I, I love that. That because that, that you really aren't competing against anyone. I, I love that idea, um, and I, I believe that who you are will be um, enough. The question I do have, though, is: Do you have a platform? And if so, what is it? I'm glad you asked that question. I do have a platform, and the platform that I offer is elevating excellence in ministry. Um, as you know, here at Little Rock, we have as the vision for the church. Uh, excellence in ministry and uh, actually uh, God gave me that vision not only for this church but for the previous church I pastored at Jones Tabernacle in Indianapolis, Indiana and as I began to look at uh, the church and look at ministry uh, I, be I, I understood that we should have a focus uh, for that ministry what is that God expects and I think that God expects our very best God is great, God is excellent and God expects excellence from all of us. Uh, excellence is something that we strive for. We're not there yet, but we certainly should strive for it. And I believe that in our striving for excellence, there are five components that we ought to employ. First, we should employ that God is glorified. First and foremost, everything we do should be to the glory of God. It should be our desire to show God off from the way we keep our grounds, from the worship that we present to him, uh, to our presentation of ministry. It should be not about me, not about any individual, all about God, how we can be used by him that we may bring attention to him, that others may see him and bring him glory as well. Uh, secondly, that Jesus ought to be magnified. To be magnified means to make larger. How do we expand Jesus? How do we spread the love of Christ? And I believe that every member, every ministry, every Christian, to see themselves as a door by which someone can come to know Jesus. Uh, that we keep in mind always that, uh, that, that in the church, uh, keeping the main thing the main thing, that we understand that while we are the church, uh, what I've even said here at Little Rock, that every sermon we preach, every song that we sing, every prayer that we pray, every bulletin that we fold, every chicken that we fry, we do it so that someone can come to know Jesus. Uh, and so someone can see themselves or that they can see um, so everyone understands that, that, that they are adorable with someone coming to know Christ 
Uh, thirdly, not only should God be glorified, not only should Jesus be magnified, but I believe that people should be edified. That in our in our desire to lead people to Jesus Christ, that once we have led them there, then it should be also uh, our desire to train them, to equip them for the service of the ministry that God has purposed them for. And in doing that, uh, we want to do our best to encourage them uh, to walk in the light of Christ. At the same time, keep in mind that we will be very deliberate about building people up instead of tearing people down. Uh, in the world, people get torn down enough. They shouldn't get torn down in the church. And unfortunately, one of the most uh, painful experiences um, in the church is church hurt. Uh, people don't expect to get hurt by the church, but sometimes they do. And we need to be very deliberate to ensure that it does not happen. Uh, fourth, we should fortify our faith, meaning that we should strive for a strong prayer life. We should strive for Bible study. We should do all we can to prepare ourselves for spiritual warfare, because it is warfare. Uh, and we, but we know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God, but are pulling down the strongholds. There are strongholds that do exist, and in, in understanding the strongholds that exist, we should prepare ourselves uh, not only um, offensively but also defensively, uh, and that is through the spiritual, um, the spiritual weapons of prayer, uh, of God's word, of just having a strong faith to do the work that God has called us to do. And I sincerely believe that if you glorify God, if you magnify Jesus, if you edify people, if we fortify faith, the result would be a multiplied ministry. Growth will happen. And it's my hope that we can bring that uh, vision and that model to the Amy Zion Church that I'm happy to say that we're experiencing tremendous growth in Little Rock. And I would like to see that kind of growth uh, also take place all across our Zion. I hope to bring that through this um, model. Well, you've actually answered my sec my next question. Uh, we wanted to discuss. Uh, there's so much dialogue going on in, across Zion now about uh, the, the demise of our church, which I personally don't agree with. But there's a lot of people. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, there are a lot of people saying that people are leaving the church. And those who come aren't staying. And I, I just, my heart goes out to that situation. And I would like to know um, what you would do as bishop to help grow the church. You know, I really believe that um, Bishop Dustin said something in a sermon I heard him preach uh, uh, years ago. Uh, it was a tape I heard. But Bishop Dustin had a sermon entitled, Seeing the Future Through the Eyes of God. In that sermon, Bishop Dustin said something that I think was absolutely profound. He said, where you stand determines what you see. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to say that where I stand, um, both here at Little Rock Church as well as at Jones Tabernacle as well as in Detroit, I did not see a dying church. I saw a growing church. And each of those congregations are different in their, in their uh, in, in the culture. Um, Metropolitan was a much smaller congregation. Uh, Jones Tabernacle was much larger than Metropolitan, a, a medium-sized congregation. Now, Little Rock is a large, larger congregation. But in each of those scenarios, we've seen growth occur. And, um, and, 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 and one thing that we've tried to do here at Little Rock is just be who we are. I don't apologize for being a pastor in the AME Zion Church. I feel proud of who uh, we are and our heritage, our tradition. Our, um, our beliefs, our doctrine, all of that, uh, I believe and holds fastly uh, to and, pr and proud of it. And none of that has turned off anybody uh, who's come to these doors. And I recognize that we're not going to be able to appeal to everybody, but if you know who you are and if you practice being who, who you are and you're proud of who you are, I think people will receive it. I really do. Uh, I think that every church has its own culture. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, what we have as members of the Amy Zion Church is a very unique um, uh, heritage and a very wonderful and a rich uh, tradition uh, that we should hold on to, but at the same time not deny the contemporary culture. So what we try to do here is we try to bridge our tradition with the tradition, with the uh, contemporary culture. Uh, we've been deliberate in that even our presentation of worship we have here what we call going from high church to half church so that uh, there's something for everybody uh, regardless of your age even for 
for seniors as well as young adults, as well as youth, as well as children. Uh, I believe that a church can offer all of that if you do it in a very deliberate way and not apologize for who you are. Now, there are some people who may know of you but not know you. And in particular, you are a son of Zion. Mm -hmm. And you are the son of a bishop. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things we wanted to know was, as the son of, of Zion, and as the son of a bishop, what do you think you can bring to uh, uh, the office of bishop that someone who may not have had the experiences that you've had? Well, first of all, I thank you for calling me a son of Zion, uh, and I guess in a way I am, in that um, I actually am the third, gen represent the third generation of ministers in the Amy Zion Church. My grandfather was a pastor in the Amy Zion Church, pastored for over 50 years. Uh, in the Amy Zion Church. Of course, my father uh, served very effectively as a pastor, uh, both in South Carolina and then uh, ultimately in Chicago, where he led the congregation to build a magnificent, well, not build, but uh, acquire a magnificent facility and uh, did some other innovative things I'm very proud of, his leadership. Um, and, and, of course, my brother is a pastor in the Amy Zion Church, uh, my aunt, uh, married a minister in the Amy Zion Church. Their son became a pastor. Uh, and so we've got ministers all through our family. I guess it's part of our DNA. And, uh, and, 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 I, and I am proud of that. Uh, I actually, believe it or not, ran from uh, the whole notion of being a minister because of the fact that they all were one. Because um, I did not, uh, um, I, I did not, uh, uh, I did not run towards ministry. I ran from it uh, until um, I had an encounter uh, of a Holy Ghost kind that helped me understand that this was my destiny, and I embraced it. And I thank God that he's blessed my ministry uh, thus far. Um, I forgot what else you asked me. <laughs> no, I just wanted to know a little more about you, or, or really for the, the audience who are watching, uh, to know a little more about you and your heritage and growing up, and I, I believe you've answered that. All right, that. good, good, yeah. It was, it's been great growing up in Amy Zion Church. Um, uh, that's all I know, you know, from the, the time of my uh, earliest existence. I've known the church, uh, growing up, uh, singing in the children's choir, being a buds of promise wearing those funny little hats, uh, uh, being a white teen, uh, coming through Sunday school, being an usher, being a choir member, uh, the recitations uh, for Christmas and Easter, learning how to bow and gesture and all those kinds of things that we were taught. And so vacation Bible school, et cetera, et cetera, going to conferences, district conferences, annual conferences all of my life. Uh, I've been immersed in our church, and I've loved every moment of it. I know that you're building a family life center at Little Rock, and I know some of the, cons the desires that you have are to help the economically disadvantaged with uh, workshops and seminars and I know that you have a thriving clothing closet and a food ministry here. Uh, would you like to expound on that? I'm grateful we have a thriving clothing ministry here. Uh, we have a clothing ministry called Heaven Storehouse and it has grown so much that we named it the Heaven Storehouse because uh, other churches are actually supplied clothing through our particular clothes ministry. Uh, and the wonderful thing about God's economy is that when you give, uh, you don't, the more you give to God, the more he gives to you. So much that you can bless people with your overflow. Mm -hmm. And so the Heaven Storehouse has been a way that we bless other churches uh, with our overflow. And, and, and that effort also to feed the hungry as well as clothe those, clothe those who may not have. And so we want to continue to put a strong emphasis on that, but also keeping in mind what our main objective is, which is to seek and save the lost. Now, there was another question that uh, has been uh, very prominent in Zion, and that's the education of the clergy. I know that in the new book of uh, the discipline that uh, they have moved uh, the requirements for uh, ministers from just having a high school diploma to having an associate degree. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, are there any other qualifications that you think uh, clergy should have? I really believe that uh, clergy should be trained. Uh, anything that you pursue, uh, you should have the credentials uh, for that particular assignment. 
Uh, I would not go to a doctor who did not have training. I would not go to a dentist who did not have training. I wouldn't go to a mechanic who did not have some kind of certification and training. And so I think that uh, you ought to do your very best to get the as much training as you can to whatever it is, whatever it is that you're pursuing. Um, we have responsibility to minister to congregations, and they deserve knowledgeable um, uh, presentations of ministry. They deserve to to know that uh, persons who are standing before them uh, have researched the information that they're sharing, that they have prepared themselves for that which they're pursuing. And so I certainly strongly encourage that. Man, I have another question. Um, and your father, again, is retired bishop of the Amy Zion Church. And uh, I know that you have an awesome relationship with him. Are there any words of advice that he's given you in your pursuit of uh, bishop, of the office of bishop? My father and my mother um, are standing strongly behind and in support of uh, my candidacy. Um, once I announced to my father uh, my desire to seek this office, he's encouraged me a great deal. Uh, he's tried his best to somewhat stay out of it um, because uh, he wants it to be uh, my own race. Um, but when I do call upon him, basically he just says, be yourself. Uh, he's proud of what uh, God is doing through this church. I'm very honored and blessed that he actually was the one who um, gave me the first appointment to Little Rock Amy Zion Church. And that itself, uh, for some, was a bit controversial. Uh, and even with myself, uh, it was a bit, I was apprehensive about even receiving it because of the perception people may have about that appointment. But I'm just very pleased to say uh, that I know once I got here, I, I tell people when I stood in the pulpit the first time, I felt God hug me. And every step, every direction uh, that we have led this congregation is because God has led me uh, in that direction. And um, so I am clear about the fact that my father uh, initially appointed me here. <clears throat> it was my father's appointment, but it was God's assignment. And, and I thank God for that. And I believe the same uh, will apply to the Episcopacy. Uh, I believe it's God's assignment. And my father uh, has done a marvelous job serving the Amy Zion Church. I'm very proud of what he has done as a leader in our, in our Zion. Uh, but I now have the opportunity to, to, to serve um, uh, in my own way and be my own self. Uh, and I bring to this office my own individuality. I bring to this office my own commitment. I bring to this office my own desire to see the kingdom of God expanded through the Amy Zion Church. Amen. Um, Zion appears to have an aging congregation. As bishop, what would be one of the things that you would do to instill in the younger generations the need for church and also the retainment of the 20 and the 30 year or some, uh, 20 and 30 something? I think you have to be deliberate. I think you have to be deliberate about having programs that appeal to younger uh, persons. Um, you know, what we've tried to do here at Little Rock is that in every, not just on certain Sundays, but every Sunday, we want people to see uh, themselves. Uh, we want children to come to church and see children involved. So we have acolytes, we have ushers, we have uh, children who are singing in a choir, both in children's choir as well as youth and young adult choir. And uh, we have them serving in many different capacities. And so we, do, you know, we have to come with the approach that not just our youth are the church of tomorrow, our youth are the church of today. That's something that God will have them do even today. And if we give them opportunity, they'll shine. And so I believe that wherever that's going on, you'll see growth. And if you have a strong emphasis on children, if you get the children, you get the parents. And so it does not matter what context there is, um, to be as deliberate as you can to have programs and opportunities for children so they can express themselves and also get to know who Christ is through the ministries that we offer. Well, I know you're busy, but we want to wrap up with this. Is there anything that you would like people to know about you? Other than I love the Lord, I love the Amy Zion Church, I love my family, and um, I am very serious about the uh, opportunity that's before us as the people of God. I think we have a very uh, wonderful opportunity to, to understand, well, let me just say it this way, 
the church, in my opinion, is the most powerful institution on the planet because we represent God, we represent Jesus Christ. And I think that if we ever, if we ever believed that we are who God says we are, we'll be a force to reckon with. And I would see, I see my role, uh, both as a as a Christian, as a minister, as a pastor, and hopefully as a bishop, to um, to to do all I can to convey that to everyone I meet. Dr. Walker, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Um, I really feel like I've gotten to know you on another level. I hope that people who are watching will also feel the same way as I do. And as we look forward to the elections for the general at the general conference in 2016, that we will remember this interview and remember this moment that we shared. Thank you again. Thank you for your time. Thank you.